Hello and welcome to Zero Cool Gaming and this week's game review. Today we're going to be reviewing Grandia. Now, Grandia is an interesting game. Um, I like the second one. I actually like the third one, I just didn't finish it because of grinding. And the first one, there were two things that I didn't like about it. There is grinding at the end of it, which I refuse to do. And the story just did not impress me at all. It's, it was too basic. If I was, you know, like 11, 12 years old, even 10, probably wouldn't have bothered me at all. I probably would have found it interesting. And I can see that this, this game was designed for that age range. Um, so, I found a review that kind of, you know, follows along with how I think. So here's a quick breakdown of the aspects of Grandia that I feel kind of, you know, bring the game down. The first one really isn't uh, a downside because I don't mind playing easy uh, games. And this game is very easy through most of it. E even the end of it would be easy. All you got to do is grind a little bit, level up, and I'm positive it would be easy. Um, the inventory system is, well, you know, this game was made a long time ago, and inventory systems back then weren't the best. They, they certainly were not user-friendly. So, there's that issue. Uh, of course, you had a, a limited amount of things that you could carry. Um... Yeah, then there's the, yeah, repetitive enemies. Do you have enemy types in this game? Yes, but there's not even as many varied enemies as there are in 2 or 3. Um, it's a very basic enemy roster. Um, and what they do is they do pallet swaps, which is fine. That doesn't bother me. You know, each time you see it at a different color, it could have you know, different abilities, different uh, uh, resistances, um, usually higher stats, higher attacks, things like that. Um, there are a couple of minor bugs in the game, but nothing that you're, you're going to find all over the place. Um... The game looks great, especially for the time that it was made. It, it's a good looking game. Um, the sound design is good on it. Uh, it is a PS1 game. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not a bad game. But yes, there were just parts of it that I did not enjoy at all. So, there's that. Um, this game was meant to come out on Sega Saturn, and it did in, in Japan. But it never did over here in the U.S. Um, and later it was made for PlayStation 1. Um... Yeah, uh, well, the visuals and the battles are sort of uninspiring, and they are pretty basic. Um, the characters and the monster sprites retain the same visual quality as in the overworld. However, the backgrounds take a dive as they look pixelated and flat. Yeah, they do. But, you know, it's just... It still doesn't look bad. Not for when it was made. Um, it is a standard RPG. 
a it does have a few hidden items and equipment and treasure chest if you really search the areas for them uh, Grandia 2 yeah I did a better job of that but um, this one you know it, it does reward you for exploration in that respect and that's a good thing And just like the other games, uh, how you run into monsters makes a difference. If you run around behind them, you'll get an advantage in battle. If you strike them before they strike you, you start even in battle. If it's a head-on strike. <laughs> and of course, if the monster touches you, then they get the advantage. Um... The mana eggs are there in this one. Skill books are in this one. Um, this is kind of where all that started for the other games. Because it's the first game. Um, not a bad game, like I said. You know, it's... Graphically, it's... For its time, it's really pretty nice. Um, the sprites are really good. The locations themselves are highly detailed. Um, many objects can be manipulated within the game, even if they don't do anything useful. Environmental effects such as rain and mist help to add to the ambience, and trees and other portions of the environment help to create mazes that are fun to explore. Um, I played this game at least three quarters of the way through, if not a little more. Uh, before it got to the point that, yeah, I had to start grinding to get past the boss. Um, but, really, for the most part, this game is, is not difficult. It's not really grindy. Um, the only reason that I was probably able to make it as far as I did at such a low level was because I played so many RPGs. So I was using tactics and things to that effect that this game was not intending the user to probably apply. Um, which, as a result, yes, left me very under-leveled by the time I had gotten pretty far into the game. Um, it's not a bad thing. I mean, if I had done a little bit of grinding all the way through... Uh, I'd probably have been right where I needed to be. But regardless, I mean, it, it's, like I said, it's not a bad game. It looks nice. It plays nice. It's easy to play. It's actually a good starter game to teach kids how to play RPGs and kind of how the systems within them work, things like that. And it's got a, you know, a story that's really designed for the younger crowd, so... In that respect, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, playing it as an adult, I just found the story to be grinding. Uh, and then when it got to the point that I needed to grind in order to uh, continue on in the game, I just I just stopped playing. I was like, yeah, I, I don't want to do that. But nonetheless, um, it's a fun game. Uh, good mechanics. Well implemented. Uh, good graphics. Uh, like I said, the enemy roster, yeah, is a little, a little short, but for its time, still not bad. And, uh, that's my review of Grandia. The game came out in 1997 and was released in 1999 on the PS1 here in the US and yeah by 1999 there had been a lot of really good games good RPGs released over here so I never played this one even back then it wasn't one that I was interested in because there were so many other choices 
and going back to it. I mean, it, it, it's not bad. I mean, obviously. <coughs> Excuse me. But going back to it as an adult, much late years later, um, it just wasn't something I was interested in. It didn't really keep me interested as far as the storyline. Uh, I could predict where the story was going almost instantly, the whole way through. It was really easy because it, it's when it was made. Some of it was probably, you know, pretty new in that respect. But by the time I play all of it, it's nothing but a bunch of tropes. I mean, it's all been memed out and everything else. And I'm just like, yeah, I, I know all of this without even ever playing it. So, I guess that's kind of my own fault. But I really did like the second game. The second game was my favorite of the Grandia series. Um... Okay, well, that's my review for Grandia, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day.